I think the first thing that runs through your mind are all the things that you wish you could do that you hadn't done. Uh, hopefully you're, you're in a place in life where you don't have a lot of issues to resolve with people. And fortunately I wasn't in that place. I, I felt I was in a very good place in terms of my family. I think the hardest thing for me was to, to, to tell people that the time was short and for them trying to deal with it because they went into a lot of denial. And, you know, in some cases still are. That's been the hardest thing. They just can't face the world without you. Well, <laughs> that'd be nice to think, but it's just, you know, it, seeing me die means they face their mortality, too. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much. You're entirely welcome. Have Bye. a nice day. Thanks. Bye. Kitty Rail is 56 years old and lives alone. Until recently, she worked as a purchasing agent with an alarm company. Eighteen months ago, she had a hysterectomy to remove cancer. At first, the prognosis was good. Then... About nine months later, after the original hysterectomy did, I began to have back pain, and sure enough, I, you know, I had uh, uterine cancer, which when it spreads is, when my doctor described it, he said it's not a good one. It's not one that has a history of being able to be cured, and the time is not very good. It's usually very short. It could be a matter of months up to the longest he heard it was like five years, I believe. So I was hoping for the five years. And it's come much quicker than, than I had hoped. You're not going to have those five years. No, I'm not. In fact, I, I, I doubt I'm looking at months at this point. Kitty tried three rounds of chemotherapy to slow the cancer. The last one, just two months ago. That was when I started having a lot of discomfort. The treatments aren't working, and the cancer is spreading. Kitty's chosen to be at home with hospice care, comfort care. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. good. Fritza, Kitty's hospice nurse, good. comes I'm several nice times a week. Well, that's She's okay. especially Go concerned right with taking care of Kitty's pain. Okay. So how are you really feeling? <clears throat> Other than, than just uh, weak, I feel fine. Okay. The pain is less? Yes, it seems good today. And how about yesterday? Yesterday was not a very good day. It really bothered me. Mm -hmm. But Kitty wants Where, more than pain control pain? at the end of life. Like Jim Witcher, she wants to control the time and circumstance of her dying. She can do so under Oregon's Death with Dignity Act, which allows her physician to help her die when she's ready. As you know, Oregon has a law that allows us to decide that we can deal with this if we want and that we can get medication that helps us to, to die. What I'm watching for is just when I'm, I just can't, I, I don't, I, it's difficult because I don't know. I don't know what the point will be when I say it's time to do this, but um, I don't, I don't want to become a vegetable. I don't want to become so that I have to dislay and somebody has to come and spoon feed me and I don't know there, there's you don't want to be helpless do you I don't want to be out of control I think that's it you don't want to be out of control I, I've always been one who wants control over things and I want control over my my decision to do that and I I just can't think of anything worse than being helpless in there and you know there's being nothing you can do bit today. Is it? It's well, nice. Have you been moving around? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. It's not because you're hurting. No. No. no I'm very All right. What are the considerations you're weighing for when to choose? I don't really know. You take it a day at a time. So far I've been able to stay at home. And I'll listen to your heart. I'm getting very weak. It's even getting hard for me to get in and out of bed. So when you're getting to that place, you're starting to go, ah, uh, you know, uh-oh. What, you know, how am I going to handle this? What am I going to do? I don't know at this point what will press those decisions of what the next choice will be. Of course, there's a gamble, isn't it, that you might reach that point where you can't do what you've planned all this time yeah, to do. Yeah, it's happened, yeah. And I guess you just deal with it, you know, but I, I would hope that I, I know the point. But you clearly haven't decided to go somewhere else. You want to stay home. I would prefer that, yes. You'd like to die at home? Yes. I understand that. 
at this moment, it's up to you. You could actually ask your doctor for the medication. Yes. And she would give it to you. Yes, I could do it tonight. Safely under the law. She's protected. Yes. You're protected. Yes. Uh, and you're just... Every morning when you wake up, do you wonder if, if this might be the day? Uh, so far, not yet. Although it's, it's, it's starting to enter my mind more in the last week or so as I've seen my strength go and it get harder and harder for me to manage. Why don't I, you I know that the time is coming, but you know, this is a good day. I'm feeling fine. I've got a good book to read. My daughter's coming over later today, so you know it, things are okay. Look at this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As her illness Pretty progressed, Kitty and her youngest daughter Jan began to organize the family photos, a way of passing on family history. Okay, I know where I remember that's, that tree. Yeah, that's Mesa, Arizona, your tree. Both Kitty's daughters support her wish to be in charge of her dying. She talked to us about, I guess, just her thoughts about it and that she was looking into it. What do you think? Well, I wasn't shocked. Um, you know, I, I think that anybody in this position would probably contemplate that. It wasn't a big surprise. Have you have all been talking help. about the, you know, about what happens now, about how you're going to manage it? Or you... We're just at this point, we're pretty much taking it day, day at a time and how yeah. I'm feeling and dealing with, uh, you know, living issues mm -hmm. here. I don't think, you know, at this point... There's... We've talked somewhat about uh, care options and, you know, if we get to a point where we might need to hire a nurse full-time or that kind of stuff, but I don't think we've talked about when you would maybe make that decision. I think she has gotten a little bit better about letting us know what we can do for her. So caring is just really being here when she needs you. Yeah. And I think it's important to be able to bring Isabel over here as much as possible. And <laughs> yeah, Bye. Bye. <laughs> that's the hardest thing. My granddaughter and my daughters. You know, they're young and just getting on with their life, and they're they're wonderful. And I just, you know, I'm I'm sorry. I'm, I won't be there to to go through life with them. I think you should have control over your life and dying is one of those things that's a part of your life. Yeah. And it's not as if you want to leave prematurely. I mean, you're trying to take every day. Oh, I'm, I'm ringing every day out. Yes, yes, I want every day that I can get. You know, it's when you reach that point where um, yeah, it's no longer bearable and I don't know what that will be. Then I, I want to be able to make that decision. <laughs> 